Welcome to the companion notebook of MLT week 2. In this week, we will focus on kernel PCA and kernel functions. Let's first focus on the kernel PCA algorithm itself. Let's take a data set X where D is the number of features and N is the number of data points. X is given by this matrix. Now let's try to visualize this using a plot. As you can see in this plot, our data set follows a quadratic function. Now how do we apply kernel PCA on this data set? Step 1 is to calculate k of dimension n cross n using a kernel function where k i j is equal to k of x i x j. Given the apparent quadratic nature of the data set, we opt for the polynomial kernel of degree 2. This kernel is given by k x i x j is equal to x i transpose x j plus 1 the whole square. Solving for k x1 x1, we get the value 9 k x1 x2 we get the value 49 and so on we get the value for k to be as this. Step 2 is to center the kernel using this formula where kc is equal to k minus ik minus ki plus iki. i is an n cross n matrix whose all elements are 1 by n. Plugging in the values of k and i into this formula, we get this. Finally, kc is given by this. Step 3 is to compute the eigenvectors beta 1 to beta n and the eigenvalues n lambda 1 to n lambda n of kc and normalize to get alpha u which is given by beta u divided by square root of n lambda u. We get n lambda and beta of kc using a solver function. Using the solver function, we get n lambda to be this and beta to be this matrix. Alpha 1 using the formula beta 1 divided by n lambda 1 the whole square root, we get alpha 1 to be equal to this, alpha 2 be to be equal to this vector and alpha 3 is given by this vector. Now let's compute the representation matrix of the our original data set. The representation is given by x transpose w, but this x transpose w can be also written as k alpha. Plugging in the values of k and alpha here, we get the uh, our representation matrix like this. The visual representation of our representation matrix is given by this plot. So as you can see, it is a uh, the data set is of a quadratic function. Now let's try to do whatever we did in this companion notebook in a Google Colab. So first we load our data set here, then we plot our data set using the matplotlib library. And as you can see, it's the same data set as before. We calculate the polynomial kernel using the polynomial kernel function here. And then we center our data set using the centering function. Kc is given by this uh, matrix. We, then we calculate eigenvectors and eigenvalues of Kc using the numpy.linalc.igets uh, method. And the eigenvalues and eigenvectors are given by this. Finally, we compute the representation matrix uh, using alpha and x prime is the representation matrix. Now let's try to apply kernel PCA on a real world data set. The data set which we'll focus here is the Swiss roll data set. First, let us import the necessary libraries. Uh, from sklearn.dataset import make Swiss roll gives us the uh, ability to make the Swiss roll data set. Let's first create the Swiss roll data set. We create the Swiss roll, Sw Swiss roll data set using the generate Swiss roll function. And uh, let's try to visualize this data set. The visual representation of the data set should ideally look like this Swiss roll. So let's plot it and see how it looks like. So as you can see, the plot of our data set looks somewhat similar to the Swiss roll. Now let's define first the kernel function. We use the RBF kernel on this data set. And as you can see, this is the RBF kernel. Now let's implement the kernel PC itself kernel PCA function, we first try to get the kernel itself using the RBF kernel. 
and then we solve when then we find the centered k. Finally, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors are given by numpy dot linalg dot eigets method and finally, we get the scaled alphas. We just take the first two components to represent our data set. Let us try to represent how our new PCs look like. So, the kernel PCA plot is given by this plot and as you can see, we have somewhat found a linear mapping for our Swiss roll data set. Now, let us go back to our companion notebook. We now focus on kernel functions themselves. A, a, a function that maps rd cross rd to r and is valid is called a kernel function. Now, what do you mean by a valid kernel? So, there are two methods to prove that a kernel is valid. The first method is to exhibit the map to phi explicitly. Now, this may be hard. So, that is why we use the second method using Mercer's theorem. So, r of kernel function rd cross rd to r is valid if and only if k is symmetric and k is positive semi-definite. That is, its eigenvalues are greater than or equal to 0. Two popular kernel functions are the polynomial kernel k x x dash which is equal to x transpose x dash plus 1 the whole raised to p. And the second famous uh, kernel function is the radial basis kernel function which is given by k x x dash is equal to exponential of minus x minus x dash norm square divided by sigma square. Now, let us try to solve some numerical problems. Question 1. Consider a thousand data points belonging to a d dimensional space having a non-linear relationship. We apply kernel PCA to reduce the dimension of data points and take the first k principal components. Can the value of k be larger than d? So, let us try to solve this problem using induction. Let the thousand data points belong to a two dimensional space, subspace, a two dimensional space x comma y. On applying a polynomial kernel of degree 2, we get uh, phi of x1, y1 and x2, y2. So, we apply it to that and we finally get our output to be this. So, as you can see, this output has six components. And therefore, the number of PCs that can be chosen range from 1 to 6. And as it can range from 1 to 6, it can be greater than D, which is equal to 2. Question number 2. A data set containing 200 examples in 3 dimensional space has been transformed to a higher dimensional space using a polynomial kernel of degree 2. What will the dimension of the transform feature space be? In this question, d is equal to 3 and p is equal to 2. To find the dimension of the feature space, we use the following formula, which is d plus p choose t. And plugging in the values of d and p into the formula, we get our answer to be 10. Therefore, when we map a three-dimensional space using a polynomial kernel of degree 2, we get a transform feature space of dimension 10. Question number 3. A kernel k is defined as rd cross rd to r. Which of the following mappings correspond to this kernel function? So, we are given four explicit mappings. The best way to solve such question is to use the options themselves and the explicit mapping to kernel function output is given by phi of x transpose phi of x. So, we plug in all the options and when we plug in option c into this formula that is phi of x transpose y phi of y, we get our output to be this which is the output of the original kernel function. Therefore, we can say that option c is the right answer. Thank you all.